Joey from Oz here. So, um, uh, as you know, I like to break stuff and hopefully break it in a way that means it doesn't stay permanently broken. At the moment, I have this digital Mitutoyo 1 to 2 inch micrometer on the bench because it was giving me some grief. I was getting error 05 and I was getting some reading in one direction but not reading in the other direction. Um, I had a P marker coming up and I had a low battery marker coming up. So the low battery marker, I tried a different battery and that didn't seem to assist. Um, and I was also struggling with the ratchet on this one. Now, we've got a thimble piece and there's a spring and then there's a sh the barrel. The thimble and the barrel are held together with this end cap. So there is no joining between those two except for in the scenario where it appears this spring um, is engaged in such a way that it um, connects between the ear and the outer so I don't know if the way it works I, I seem to recall there was a definite positive click on my other ones, a real sort of ratchety sort of click, 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 as I over or I reach the measuring sensitivity of the mic. In this scenario, with the spring around one way, the barrel freewheels in one direction and then tightens up in the other direction. So the spring could potentially be reversible such that it works in the opposite direction just by flipping it through itself. Um, I'll do a quick assembly. So with the spring on this way, rotation clockwise, any friction with the spring would be inclined to loosen the spring, oh sorry, wind it inwards. So how that looks like with the barrel is to get it started. It has free motion in the other direction and it locks up in the reverse. So it's essentially ratcheting in the opposite direction and spinning in the forward direction. I can't see anything obviously ratcheting in the headstock and for the life of me I can't see anything in the barrel itself that would have acted as a ratchet inside there. It looks like an assembly that could potentially have been made in a single piece. Now obviously a fairly complex one, but I just can't see any mechanism for ratcheting. There was this groove on the shaft, and originally I thought that that might have had something to do with the ratcheting, but instead I believe that is the carrier for the encoder disc. Now deep down in the guts, I'll just try and turn the light. So deep down in the guts of this assembly, there is a little encoder disc in there, which when it rotates, gives you an encoding to the electronics. There you can see the face plate of the encoder disc and the, if we can get a picture on it, the encoder wheel. That appears to be secured using those three Phillips screws down the barrel. We don't really have anything clever. It does appear that this collar will tighten up to allow you to loosen or stiffen the feel of the uh, of the spindle. In the front side, which is going to be a little bit tricky to see. There's a flathead screw, just visible in the top left hand corner there. The moment that's set to holding a barrel and a spring, when those are released, I believe this would be taking the
backlash out in the assembly would be done using this. Release the spring, allow it to tighten up on the shaft, and then tighten it back down again to lock the shaft to length. So now, really hard to see down there, there's a spring and a barrel. So I'm going to try assembling this back again using the concept of maybe what was causing the problem is that it had slipped on the shaft and that the barrel tension wasn't correct. Let's see how we go. Okay, so there is definitely a balance between the return spring, which holds the encoder disc up against the uh, electronics. I've now got it so that it is measuring in both directions, regardless of speed, it's keeping track. So the error 05 possibly was dropped at one stage, something like that. So now the final piece, um, I've still got a battery light, which means I've got to get a new battery for it. And I'm just going to reverse, see here the direction of the spring. I'm just going to reverse the spring and see if I can't get a bit of a, a stiction. Okay, okay, so new battery in. So we've no longer got the B in the top left corner, which is the indicator for low battery, it seems. It seems that we've now got it tracking very well in both directions and it doesn't lose, it seems to be losing steps. Inches to millimeters works, hold works, uh, absolute origin button seems to be giving us a little blinking P which is the same blinking P that we get when we have the um, battery replaced. So I guess it's to say if you accidentally press that origin button, it's going to say something went wrong. You have to press it twice before it resets and allows you to measure. If you set an incremental zero, that all works. To go back to ABS, absolute value, doesn't seem to allow you to do that without you doing an absolute and a set at absolute zero. So again, we've tested origin zero, and we're now set. Locking handle works. As far as the thimble goes, I have tightened the spring up a little bit, expanded it as such. It doesn't ratchet like my other one does, it just slips if you go too far. So it will give a bit of a feel, I guess, um, but it certainly no, doesn't feel anywhere near as positive my other set. So I might pull the cap off the other set and see if there's actually a ratcheting mechanism in there that's missing in this one. But other than that, E05 certainly seems to be partially caused by the encoder disc being allowed to come off the face of the sensor ring. The adjustment for it involves tweaking the two flat screws inside. One is a spring mounted collar, so you release the clamp on the spring mounted collar which is on the anvil end, which frees up the spring mounted collar to push against the other end. As you lock up this end, if it's too tight, then you'll have difficulty turning. If it's too loose, then your encoder won't be held above. So it's, it's a matter of just tweaking those so that you've got enough preload set by the spring and then just released if you need to. The screw on the right hand side is a locking cap 
on a second pin, which is what locks into the groove that's on the about 15 mark on the gauge, which is what turns the disc as it goes in and out on the anvil. And then the locking collar just tightens up and loosens up on that. I hope that's useful for somebody, and uh, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you'd like more of these videos.